Hello, my name is Sarah McClure, and today I'll be talking about how we should rethink tenant networking abstractions. A recent study found that 88% of responding enterprises use two or more cloud providers, and 92% use both public and private cloud deployments. Consequently, many enterprises must construct and manage their own virtual equivalent of a backbone network. In our paper, we argue that the realities of this task are unnecessarily complex for tenants to manage and seek to offer a much simpler solution. Let's start by looking at how these architectures work today. Let's pretend we're an enterprise with workloads that span multiple regions within a cloud, multiple clouds, and on-prem data centers. At a high level, constructing the networks to host these applications requires five steps. First, we create individual virtual networks. This involves many additional decisions, such as how to assign prefixes, determining whether to use IPv4 or v6, public or private addresses, and so on. These initial decisions are important as they determine what is and is not possible in design choices later down the road. As the tenants networks eventually grow in size and number, managing ACLs, route tables, and interfaces becomes more and more difficult. Second, we decide how instances within a virtual network access resources outside the network, which may require setting up certain gateways for internet access and or NAT capabilities. Further, we connect multiple virtual networks together. This may be across clouds or across regions within a cloud. To connect two virtual networks, a tenant may use a virtual network peering, while connections to other clouds and on-prem will require gateways or other peering options. Next, we may want a dedicated connection from our private data centers to the cloud to ensure high availability and consistent performance. This will require reserving a link between the cloud data center and an internet exchange point. From there, we may use an MPLS link reserved from our ISP to complete the dedicated connection. Lastly, now that we have established a basic topology, we may deploy a wide array of virtual appliances such as load balancers and firewalls. Here, we must select the appliance, place them in the topology, configure routing to steer traffic appropriately, and configure the device itself. Now that we see the overall structure, let's take a more detailed look at this deployment. In our private data center, we've used physical network boxes such as routers, firewalls, and load balancers since before even having a cloud deployment. Managing this was difficult in and of itself, partly motivating our move to the cloud. Let's say we first adopted Azure. Here we work with similar abstractions to before with user-defined routes, firewalls, and load balancers again. Once more, when we added AWS to our topology, we learned the ins and outs of these kinds of boxes in that environment as well. In the cloud deployments, we run our applications on tenant networks we construct. These tenant networks run atop the cloud providers which run on their own physical infrastructure. The abstractions available in tenant networks often mirror the physical boxes in a real data center. Even though we're sitting atop the cloud provider's infrastructure in the stack, we're not seeing higher level abstractions. We're still dealing with the same low level components we were when we managed our own infrastructure. Further, each cloud has its own unique abstractions. Our network engineers actually have to manage three different networking stacks as the building blocks, tooling, et cetera, are not consistent across each of these networks. Our network has become complex to reason about due to this fragmentation, so management and evolution are particularly hard. Let's say our network engineer decides that our Azure deployment needs a new load balancer. They may then head to the official Azure load balancing documentation, which will show them this flowchart for determining what kind of load balancer to use. Obviously, choosing which virtual device to use is non-trivial, and even once we do choose one, we'll have to learn how to configure that specific appliance. This problem has not gone unnoticed by industry. If we decide this complexity is too much for our engineers, we could use one of many multi-cloud solutions which seek to give one management plane to this mess. However, this doesn't solve the underlying complexity, but handles it through a shim layer service instead. In order to address the underlying complexity, our proposal is to simplify the tenant's interface to cloud networking resources by eliminating the tenant networking layer altogether. Instead, all the functionality will be provided by a combination of the application layer and the cloud providers networking. If we're rejecting today's abstractions, what will we replace them with? We answer this first by determining what tenants try to achieve with their networks. We believe these goals boil down to connectivity, availability, security, and quality of service. Broadly, rather than forcing tenants to construct the virtual networks to achieve these goals, 
we seek to provide a declarative API, which allows tenants to specify these goals on a per endpoint basis, abstracting away all the gory networking details. Our proposal hinges on a key idea of publicly routable but default off. Here, we distinguish between routability and reachability. In order to make multi-cloud communication trivial, we will give every endpoint a publicly routable IP address. While this sounds scary from a security standpoint, all endpoints are, de are default off, meaning that all traffic destined for that address will be dropped by the cloud provider unless specified otherwise. Only addresses explicitly allowed by the tenant will ever reach the destination as the cloud provider will be obligated to drop any traffic that does not appear in a per endpoint permit list. Let's walk through our API in terms of the tenant goals we outlined earlier while creating a simple deployment. Let's say we have two VMs in some cloud running the same service. To get basic connectivity, we request an endpoint IP or EIP for each. Recall that these addresses are default off, so all traffic will be dropped. We want our service to be highly available, which is why we have two nodes running it, but we need to load balance the traffic between them. Therefore, we request a service IP or SIP and bind each EIP to the SIP. The bindings will tell the cloud provider which endpoints it must load balance for the given service. Now, to actually allow traffic to our service, we add a rule to permit user traffic to reach our endpoints. Lastly, to get benefits similar to today's dedicated connections, we request some amount of dedicated bandwidth in or out of the cloud. See the paper for details on how this compares to today's class offerings and its own specific challenges. Getting back to our original example, we are able to reduce the number of steps in our process of setting up our multi-cloud deployment from five to two or three if including class. Our network engineer no longer has to think about the intricacies of each offered load balancer from each cloud and is free to think about anything else. Taking our API to a more specific example, here's a multi-region deployment diagram from one of the multi-cloud solutions I mentioned before, Aviatrix. We have two regions with many instances. These instances are grouped according to their purpose and connect to a transit VPC for, the, for a connection between regions and to an on-premises domain. Using our proposed API, the tenant would only need to worry about the endpoints, requesting addresses and setting their permit lists as shown in this code example. Accordingly, we're able to ignore many of the appliances in this diagram. Specifically, the tenant may ignore 16 gateways, two firewalls, 12 VPCs, and two peerings. Overall, this is 32 network boxes the tenant can disregard. This cleans up the overall topology and makes the tenant's view look like this. Here, we have instances grouped as before, including those in our private data centers. Now the tenant does not have to construct connections through low-level networking abstractions. In fact, a topology is no longer important as our publicly routable but default off addresses make connections between endpoints trivial. Instead of mapping all of the constructed connections, we just see endpoints decorated with their permit list specifying the other endpoints in the deployment that may communicate with them. Further, if we decide to migrate one of these regional deployments to another cloud, we simply instead use the new cloud's API in the same way. Importantly, we do not require one standardized API across all cloud providers, but nonetheless, we believe this interface will reduce the pain of multi-cloud tenants since our API is streamlined and high level. Further, we anticipate the specific implementation of this API to vary in extension parameters, allowing the cloud providers to distinguish themselves in both feature set and cost quality trade-off. We're not aiming to remove any existing functionality, just not create a new abstraction for every possible feature. Our proposal leaves many open questions, which largely fall under whether this design is simple or simplistic. We think this falls into two sub questions. The first is about feasibility. For example, is it scalable for a cloud provider to keep consistent and dynamic per endpoint permit lists for each tenant? There are many pieces to the feasibility question overall, and we hope to tackle these with the appropriate data in future work. The second is whether tenants would adopt such an API. Our response is simply to note that our proposal can exist in parallel to today's abstractions and may be appealing to simpler, low-risk deployments at first, much like the cloud in general once was. In summary, today we talked about the bloated set of low-level networking abstractions available to tenants and how a simplified declarative per endpoint API could make these increasingly common but complex multi-cloud architectures much simpler. Thank you.